Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white caustic bronco combo deck. This was actually one of the better performing archetypes in last weekend's Pro Tour, even if it did not quite make it through to the top 8. And the main combo that this deck is capable of is caustic bronco alongside shadow of mortality being a 15 mana card. So all we need to do is saddle the bronco, which requires us to tap a 3 powered creature, can even be a creature we just played for the turn and there's plenty of those through out and then when the bronco attacks we reveal the top card of our library and put it in our hand we either lose life equal to that card's mana value if we did not saddle the bronco but if we actually did now our opponent loses that much life instead now how do we set up the top of our deck with shadow of mortality also pretty simple just cast a three mana insatiable avarice using the first mode from spree searching our library for any card and put it on top of the deck after shuffling so all we need is bronco another three powered creature or or maybe multiple smaller creatures and then cast insatiable avarice put shadow on top attack with a bronco and then regardless of our opponent blocking we get to deal 15 damage to the opponent directly which can often win us the game on the spot now of course we can also randomly reveal shadow of mortality ideally when we already saddled the bronco otherwise we might take a lot of damage ourselves so that's part of our game plan to help enable it we can also protect our bronco with maybe a turn one screlve we can also protect it with a turn 3 Peacekeeper, which conveniently also helps saddle the Bronco. And then the Peacekeeper also just a good card in various matchups, especially against opposing combo decks that rely on a single card, as we can now make it more expensive. Then Steel Seraph, another great way to help saddle the Bronco as a 3-powered creature, but it also helps give it flying so it can attack past opposing blockers. And if we happen to reveal Steel Seraph to a Bronco that's saddled, we still get to deal 6 damage to the opponent, even though it's still a 3-mana play, so that's also quite synergistic. And then as you'll notice our mana base has mostly just black white dual lands and only swamps and no basic planes since we do also want to cast insatiable avarice to draw three cards at the cost of three life so that can also be a nice turn three play just to help us refuel and then insatiable avarice also combines quite nicely alongside shieldred the apocalypse as we can either draw cards ourselves and offset the life loss by gaining two for every card we draw or we can even target the opponent if we have a shieldred in play and then insatiable avarice can deal a nice Nine damage total, three from the ability, and then a six more from uh, Shieldred triggering three times. So that can also maybe help end the game if there's a bit of a board stall. So we do have those uh, combos as well. And then rounding out the deck, I did replace the two main deck copies of Rafine's Informant with two copies of Pest Control to better adapt the deck to the best of one meta, since Pest Control can be quite effective against the decks like Monorad Aggro or especially Red White Convoke, which tends to make a lot of cheap permanents, and then we can always cycle it if it's not needed. And then we have uh, the Shrouded Shepherd as well, which can also come in handy against a tokens deck by giving opposing creatures minus one, minus one. Can also just play it, maybe even pump itself as a way to help saddle the Bronco, so it's also quite flexible. And then we have a bit of spot removal sprinkled in with cut down and go for the throat, also pretty important against aggro. And then hopefully we don't draw the Shadow of Mortality since it can be kind of expensive to cast, although it does also kind of synergize with our own Insatiable Avarice since we end up paying life to it, and then we can maybe cheaply cast a Shadow of Mortality as a 7-7. And then we also have Tenacious Underdog as another cheap 2-mana 3-2 that can help saddle the Bronco and can also come back from the graveyard to draw some more cards. Also pretty good with Shieldred in play. And then our mana base has lots of black-white dual lines, including the new Shadowy Backstreet, which surveils when it enters. Can also maybe help set up the top of our deck with Caustic Bronco. And then a Restless Fortress as a creature land. Concealed Courtyard will also be a nice upgrade for black-white mana bases in standard going forward. And then Caves of Koilos. And then the channel lands for added utility and five swamps since we don't want too many planes for the insatiable avarice. And then I've also included the sideboard that the player submitted in the Pro Tour. And that includes additional copies of Pest Control for the Convoke matchup mostly. We've got some additional spot removal for aggro in Cut Down and then Knockout Blow specifically for red decks. Then we've got some Graveyard Hates with two copies of Rest in Peace, very important to stop some of the combo decks in the format, as well as a Kutzel's Flanker, which can also exile the opponent's graveyard when it enters, while still being a three-powered creature to help saddle the Bronco. And then we've got some Hand Disruption in the form of Duress, 
especially against blue-white control. We've got Invasion of Gobakan, which can also pressure the opponent's hand, while maybe if we transform it, can start growing the team, and can also be sacrificed to give our team Hexproof and Indestructible. So I imagine this is at its best against a team or landfall ramp deck, which we can not only disrupt their hand, but if transformed, can also save the team from an ill-timed explosion. So a sweeper that destroys as opposed to exiles, since this won't help you against a card like Sunfall necessarily. And then we also have access to three copies of Avon Interrupter, which can be a nice play at instant speed to send one of the opponent's spells back to exile and make it cost two more. So that can also be a nice tool against decks trying to resolve expensive spells. And then we've got uh, some generic removal with Touch the Spirit Realm. can also be channeled, which is a nice combo with Steel Seraph, since we can maybe upgrade a 3-3 into a 5-4 flyer. So that's another neat synergy. So yeah, those are some useful ideas for those looking to play it in best of three. But I'll be playing this in best of one today just to get a wider range of matchups. So let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is all removal. We're not really a control deck, so we do need some threats to be able to enact our game plan properly. So, yeah, unless we draw, like, an Avarice to start drawing more action, we're gonna be in a bit of trouble eventually. And then Iganjo, also one of our only white sources that doesn't cast Avarice if we want to draw cards with it. So, while there might be matchups where this works out fine, I think uh, I'm better off taking a mulligan. All right, so I'll try this. One cut down can go. And then we do have Avarice to try to undo our mulligan. I have to discard. How good is Shepard going to be if I cast it versus keeping a cut down to maybe take out a more important creature? Yeah, they might have some one toughness creatures as well in blue black. It's hard to tell. I'm not doing anything proactive if I discard Shepard, but a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two is probably not going to win me the game either. A Bronco might. Especially if we find a third land for Peacekeeper. And we already have the Avarice to set up the top of our deck. Okay, Rona can be cut down at least. So, I'll keep it simple. Hope to draw a land off of this. We did. And then Swamp. Is it helpful? So next turn we're likely going for Peacekeeper to help saddle. I don't think Swamp does much for me. Pretty far from a 5 mana Avarice. Opponent on the uh, Multicolor Legends deck with Slogurk now as well. I guess I could have kept maybe a land on top and then they would have milled it, but... Okay, we found Steel Seraph, which actually allows Bronco to fly over Slogurk. And then next turn Avarice can maybe set up the Shadow for the win. So these were some fortunate draws. The Legends deck not known for having a ton of removal, it's mostly channel lands, so they might end up bouncing some of our creatures with Odawara. Tiny Bones is fine. So yeah, as long as they tap out and don't mess with our Bronco or Steel Seraph, should be able to just win, but opponent keeps up three mana, which presumably represents one of the aforementioned bounce lands. So I think that means just playing Shieldred. Could also go for the Peacekeeper, which can maybe mess with our sequencing a little bit. Because this could also name one of the channel lanes, which will then cost two more to activate. Yeah, I guess maybe I don't care about Shieldred too much. Alright, so I guess no bounce lanes after all, so could have just gotten there. Now we can name Gisa, which would immediately trigger off Tiny Bones joins up. It's the Hellraiser. And yeah, then next turn with Insatiable Avarice we should just win. Although if I get very lucky here, there's just a shadow on top waiting for me. I have to fly over Tiny Bones. Alright, drew a land. Bones at 7. So Avarice can also potentially just go face to close out the game. Opponent found the Relic, which plays Titania. 
which can maybe block a flying Bronco, but we just need a trigger here to win the game. Tiny Bones can also trigger, maybe cast something out of my graveyard. But only permanence. And uh, they don't quite have the mana for Peacekeeper. Alright, so Insatiable Avarice should set it up. Shadow of Mortality, and our opponent knows what's incoming. Can saddle, attack, and deal 15. Okay, we're on the play. We have hopefully a turn to Bronco, although it will require an extra untapped land. And then we've got ways to saddle it. It's a little sketchy because of the mana. But any untapped land will set us up beautifully. And our opponent's on turn one Inspector. No such luck. So it's kind of like we're back on the draw instead of on the play. Another Inspector. The Adventure from Shepherd could also come in handy. Although not quite as good as, let's say, a Pest Control would be here, wiping the opponent's entire board. An Impakal, also quite scary. Okay, so we can play a Peacekeeper at least to have a look. Or we can go for the throw at Anim, and then that's my entire turn. This feels more mana efficient. And then probably just name the Inspector, although I could also name something not in hand. Like they're probably running War Leader's Call. And then not interested in attacking. So if Anima attacks, we could double block to trade, probably losing the Peacekeeper. Okay. You're just gonna send an Inspector to grow Anim, make some tokens. So now Go for the Throat is looking a little bit better. Or we can Steel Seraph to fly the Bronco, which I also don't hate. And then we still have a Peacekeeper back, then Anim can attack. But we can still clean up the tokens with Shepherd and then go for the Throat for Anim. So I'm kind of waiting until I find a fourth land to have a more efficient turn. And then for now I don't hate Steel Seraph. Saddle and fly. And we found the land. Okay, so next turn we can both go for the throats and adventure the shepherd. Bonan just channeling Sokans on. And a gleeful demolition to make more tokens. Well, as long as they're not doing anything with those tokens, that's not too bad. Because next turn they're gonna be gone. Alright, so how much damage are we talking if we block like so? Take 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, that's acceptable. Alright, how about we clean house? Could uh, wait on the go for the throat maybe. Start here. And then saddle Bronco using Steel Seraph. And this time we can go for Life Link on the Peacekeeper. Attack, see what we find. And then, yeah, I guess I'll just go for the throat now. Okay. And that's good enough for a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands, not all that exciting, but perhaps keepable. Can play tap land, turn to either go for the throat or underdog. And then eventually Insatiable Avarice is quite good with Shieldred. So just need to hit some land drops. 
facing blue-white. I'll play Bank Street now. And then keep a Shattered Sanctum on top. So we can curve Underdog into maybe an Avarice on 3. Hoping this is more of a mid-range deck as opposed to a dedicated blue-white control deck. Because otherwise our removal is not going to find too many targets. Uh, it is Esper, maybe Legends. And Preacher can be answered by Go for the Throat, since it does survive cut down. That's fine. And then next turn Shieldred may not survive. So we could also double spell cut down with Avarice if that lines up better. Opponent passes. Okay, so we can attack if they make a 2-2 two -two token from um, the adventure. Could still cut down or I can just let the trade happen, play Shieldred. And then we're most likely going to see removal on Shieldred. But then we can try and pull ahead with our card draw. Sure. If they keep up 3 mana, then we have to be concerned about a potential counter spell as well. So that complicates matters. They could have the uh, blue-white, no more lies, or maybe a make disappear. So in that case, I kind of like just casting an Avarice to draw three. If they play Mastermind in response, I guess it's worth it to keep up cut down. All right, Pono lets it resolve, and we'll pass a turn. Opponent with a tide binder here, end of turn, which I could still cut down. I guess we'll let them untap first, maybe that changes their decision making. Tide binder can also shut down Shieldred's ability. And Rafine. Okay, cut down also an answer to Rafine, but I'll just prevent them from maybe triggering Rafine in the first place. Although I guess that's another close call. Because yeah, next turn I could go Shieldred, but then I can't pay the ward on Rafine to cut down. So we may as well do this now. That works. And a duelist. Alright, seems like a good opportunity for Shieldred. Opponent's got one card in hand. So even if they do have removal and I want to play Peacekeeper first, I'll be able to pay the extra mana for Shieldred. So that seems fine. I can attack with Underdog if they block with Rafine. Igancho is also an option, I guess, which would cost me 4 mana, so that's my whole turn, but maybe that's still potentially worth it. It's a free roll, more or less. They might be worried about Wandering Emperor, but no opponent goes for the block. Yeah, I think I prefer getting Shieldred out there, although if their last card is removal, I may end up regretting this, because then Rafine and Duelist can kind of go off. Uh, you know what, since we're in a pretty good spot, I'll just play it safe. And then an untapped land is probably acceptable. Although it doesn't really let me double spell anything significant. So maybe I look for more irrelevant spells. So one card in hand for the opponent. They do have some creature lands they can activate. But those won't stop the combo of Shieldred plus Avarice. Alright, so our opponent's not keeping up any counter spells. Draws into a land. So now Underdog can also attack past Duelist. And the more our opponent attacks us, the closer we get to casting a Shadow of Mortality for what it's worth. Alright, opponent did have a cutdown, so that's their last card. So now. The coast might be clear for Shieldred. Had I cast Shieldred before attacking, then they just cast a cutdown beforehand, so Shieldred doesn't trigger an additional time. Bone and draws, so no instant speed answer in hand yet. And next turn we could potentially just win the game. Another Tide Binder could complicate matters. Preacher is fine. And another Shadow of Mortality. So, I guess the interesting thing here is if I do cast Insatiable Avarice targeting the opponent, they lose 9 life total 
fall to two. And then next turn they would die to shield root. Problem is they have three untapped mana. So if we draw them into, let's say, a go for the throat or another tide binder, then they may be able to survive. And all of a sudden we've given them three extra cards. So maybe I should just play it safe and wait another turn on the avarice until they're actually at nine life. Could also just draw myself. And then maybe just put another Avarice on top. Yeah, actually, let's do that. That way there's no real risk and we still get to benefit from it. Just put another Avarice on top. And then I can play Underdog. And then next turn, Avarice for the win, hopefully. Opponent with just a land. Their so opponent is tapped out. And this second Avarice should do it. Could also search up a card here if we wanted to. Maybe put a Bronco on top, but the game should end here. Sweet. So getting to see both modes of Avarice with Shieldred in play. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got Bronco and some creatures to help saddle it. So I'm gonna try it. On the draw could be too slow against Aggro. Although it seems like we're up against maybe the Teamer Landfall ramp deck. Finding Skrelv is useful, although the opponent's main interaction is in the form of a sweeper. Ill-timed explosion doesn't really care about Skrelv. So if they find one of those, it's going to be pretty difficult to uh, find a win. But we can try. Next turn, Steel Seraph can maybe give Bronco flying. And then Avarice can maybe set Shadow on top of the deck for 15 damage. Spelunking also makes their fetch lands quite a bit better, since the lands will enter untapped afterwards. But uh, yeah, play Seraph and hope to avoid an ill-timed explosion. For now, just hit a lane, so no additional damage. Opponent's got a Nissa, alright, so at least no explosion, which gives us a chance to combo with the Bronco next turn, but it's not gonna be lethal just yet, especially with the extra life gain from all these fetch lanes. And our opponent might still be able to cast some additional spells here with the extra mana from Nissa. Finds an Aftermath Analyst, in which they can play. So next turn, that would get back a ton of lands and probably win them the game, one way or another. So yeah, we can Avarice put Shadow on top, give Bronco flying, and then I guess I would still need to saddle the Bronco, which... I'm one mana short of doing, since we can cast this for three, but I would need to basically play another two drop in order to saddle it, since Skrelv by itself doesn't get there. So if I then instead saddle with a Steel Seraph, this can gain flying, and then we have 17 damage, which is a little bit short. And then next turn it's going to be quite bad for us. Opponent also will gain a bunch of life back. But maybe that's still the best I can do here. So 
So 15 new, two more. And then we can play Bank Street to surveil. And we'll see what damage our opponent can do. But yeah, they probably gained about three life here with all the fetch lanes, which is going to end up making the difference. So their opponent starts with the fetch lanes, more value to be gained with the aftermath analyst. And the spelunking makes analyst even more dangerous. So opponent's going to have a lot of mana, a lot of extra life. They already have deluge in hand, now with analysts they can string those together too. So this turn is probably going to take a few minutes to completely resolve. But by the end of it, our opponent will be at around uh, 12 to 15 life. And uh, yeah, I mean, we could be dead for all we know. Third analyst. So they can just sacrifice one after the other. Our opponent is going to run out of basic lands to search up at least. But analysts still quite good with Nissan Spelunking in play. Especially Nissan then once they run out of basics. So our opponent's floating 16 mana. So they can just cast a lethal burn spell here if they have it in hand. World Souls Rage for 19 will do it. It's going to be Virtue of Strength getting back Titania instead, which can gain them even more life. So even another Shadow of Mortality is no longer going to be good enough. Plus they still have a Memory Deluge they could cast and flash back, which undoubtedly would find them a win condition as well. So they've got all angles covered. Yeah, showcasing the power of the Bronco combo, being able to deal 15 out of nowhere. But at the same time, also the strength of the Teamer Landfall deck, if you don't interact with some of their combo pieces early on, they can just uh, do this. Okay, so Virtuous Strength in play, tripling the mana of their basics, cast Deluge. And they're still just looking for World Soul's Rage. But in the meantime, our opponent's at 28, so there's no chance of us ever dealing that much damage. I would be surprised if we get another turn. Virtue get back Analysts, Rinse and Repeat. Double Virtue, making even more mana. I believe this is the opponent's turn 5, and they can essentially draw their whole deck. So the power level in standard is pretty high. Opponent goes to attackers. Maybe they haven't found the World Souls Rage yet. Never mind. X equals 15. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and yeah, I'm gonna keep this. Sadly, already have a shadow in hand, but uh, just need to hit a third land drop to curve Bronco into Peacekeeper. 
And we can still maybe saddle the Bronco with a second Bronco if needed. And now Avarice can maybe help set up the combo as well. Against Red White, we'll keep Skrelf to protect our 2 2. And an Inspector's opponent is on Boros Convoke. And we'll see if they also have the Gleeful Demolition, looks like it. Zero points off to a pretty good start as well. Now at least we don't have to worry about opposing removal as much. So Peacekeeper can have a look. And Warleader's Call is a good one to name. Evangelist as well. I guess I name Evangelist. And then I can use Skralf, give protection from red here, essentially. Crew the Bronco. Get an attack in for two while triggering. And then next turn we should be able to put Shadow of Mortality on top with Avarice for another 15 damage. I'm pretty happy their opponent attacked all out. And pass control, the card I added to the deck, also looking pretty good here. But uh, we should be able to just win, because now Skralf can attack, so 3 plus 15 is 18. So yeah, let's saddle the Bronco. Avarice, put a card on top. Shadow of Mortality, and attack. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's uh, pretty one-dimensional. Just a bit of removal and then hope Shieldred can win us the game. Against some aggressive decks, this is not a bad strategy. I'll try it. And then ideally find a 3-drop we can cast. Opponent on red aggro with turn 1 Ruckus. Plotted to maybe set up a turn 2 slick shot. There it is. Well, go for the throw, it's looking good. Drawing a third shield red, maybe not ideal. And then since we're up against a red deck and not red-white, I think it's safe to just wait on go for the throat since they're not gonna protect the slick shot. And maybe they're inclined to play more pump spells. So opponent gets to attack. They will draw a card of Demonic Ruckus, but Slickshot's still this carrier of the two creatures. And then now Peacekeeper an option, or we can keep up Go for the Throats, play a tap land, and next turn be guaranteed a Shieldred. I think that's slightly better. Cut down also seems worth keeping. Can maybe play it alongside a Peacekeeper next turn. If we want to check out their hand first. So yeah, we kept a somewhat risky hand, but this is the type of matchup where it could line up quite favorably. Opponents got another code breaker, so now I'm certainly in favor of Peacekeeper plus Cutdown before playing Shieldred. And we see lots of Lightning Strikes, Godric, and another Ruckus. So name Lightning Strike for sure. So they won't be able to cast those for a while. Keep up cut down, and then if our opponent goes for Domino Caracas, we can punish them. But the opponent just with a Swiss spear, plotting the Ruckus, and then I'll just cut down now so I can freely tap out for Shieldred. And Peacekeeper can hit for three. Well, the Peacekeeper is doing a lot of work. They can ruck us on the Swiss Spear, but it still doesn't attack past the Shieldred. And Shieldred can close out games pretty quickly. I guess if they draw land for Godric and then put the Ruckus on it, they can start flying over. So that's a little bit of a concern. But yeah, Shieldred good enough for a concession here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with turn 2 Bronco, turn 3 Peacekeeper, so I'll keep. 
And then with an extra white source, Steel Seraph can grant a Bronco Evasion if needed. Although it might get taken out here before we ever get to attack. Potent seems to have a cut down. So we won't get to have any fun with our horse. But we still have a decent hand. Peacekeeper to maybe name another removal spell. Scene of the crime. Interesting. Okay, put on blue-black. A reanimator combo with reenact the crime, besiege the mirror. So they're looking to set up the graveyard and then combo off with the reenact pretty much. So that's their key card. Could also name some of their enablers. But uh, they currently can't cast those. So, yeah, reenact the crime. Because even if they besiege for reenact, they still need to cast it. Opponent found the blue source for Kaito. Pass control could clear the token, but I'm just going to play shoulder it. Keep it simple. So your yeah, opponent's likely looking to combo off with a Conspiracy Unraveler and maybe breach the multiverse as well. But to set that up they need to first discard the Unraveler and then reenact the crime at back. So your opponent falls to 12. This can make zombies if they can cast multiple spells in one turn. And now I guess just steal Seraph. Can give one of our creatures flying to finish off Kaito while Shieldred goes face. Although ignoring Kaito could also be reasonable since if they draw cards they lose more life. And if they make tokens we have pest control. Keep another peacekeeper. And next turn we should be able to close out the game. I guess they can cast Besiege with Bargain now by sacking a token. Not sure if they have any sweepers in their main deck, perhaps. Uh, I see Bargain with the Scene of the Crime clue. For another Besiege, I guess that triggers the Flesh Rite. Alright, so that's pretty cute, so they can just make a bunch of zombies here by stringing together Besiege. But what's the end goal? Reenact the crime, which they cannot cast because of Peacekeeper. And our opponent concedes. Alright, so on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a promising hand. Can play turn two Bronco and then enable it with the Peacekeeper. And then pass control. I don't think I keep since we have our turn to play already scripted. And hopefully we won't need the sweeper here. Skralve a little bit late to the party, although we also needed to play out a tapped land at some point. And looks like our opponent's got the removal for Bronco, so maybe more of a Boros midrange deck as opposed to Boros tokens. Well, we may as well play the Peacekeeper here to find out. Alright, that resolves. So now I could name a Lightning Helix, and then they don't have any interaction. Now Steel Seraph is an artifact, so I can take it out with Go for the Throat. So that's potentially a concern, but still got to name Lightning Helix here, I think. And then we get to Saddle. And find Skrull for one damage. If they do prototype the Steel Seraph, it will be white, so then Skrull can maybe help attack past it. Alright, never mind. Opponent goes for a Splendid Angel. So now we can just go for the throat and play Skrelv. That seems decent. We could also play Peacekeeper, naming the Vindicator, of which they have two copies, but then they can still disguise it, I think. So 
Yeah, I'll uh, keep it simple. Go for the throat resplendent. And then I think I just attack with the Bronco instead of saddling it. And place Krelv so we can also hit with the Peacekeeper. I think on average, three damage is probably better than the Bronco's ability. Unless we hit a shadow here. But, uh... Alright, hit another Bronco. So that worked out. Also looking for a fourth lane. And pass a turn. Put him now firing off Lightning Helix on the Peacekeeper. That's fine. And we can just play another one, now naming Vindicator, perhaps. They've got another Lightning Helix in hand. Well, now we do have Skrull for protection, so I don't care about Lightning Helix as much. If they play Steel Seraph again, it will be white if it is a prototype, so then Skrull can also help attack past it. So I think Vindicator makes the most sense, since they have two copies. And then we will keep Skralv available. Find another Shieldred, at least got us 4 damage. So still waiting for an extra land. Now if they drew an untapped land, they can maybe a Lightning Helix Skralv still play Seraph, and that will slow us down. It's gonna be another Resplendent instead. Okay. Find Cut Down, that one's not quite good enough. So... What's our play? I can play the Shepherd to pump up the Bronco. And then I would have to tap Skrelv to saddle the Bronco alongside the Shepherd if I also want to attack with the Peacekeeper. Which could be pretty bad if our opponent then goes Lightning Helix and Steel Seraph for life gain, because then they get to make an Angel token. So maybe that means I just saddle with the Peacekeeper here. Could also attack and basically finish off Resplendent Angel with the Shepherd's ability. Maybe that's the correct play. So I'll just attack, not use Skralv, and not Saddle. Find Underdog. Opponent just trades. That's fine. May as well play the Seraph now. Giving Bronco flying doesn't really matter when all the opponent's creatures fly. Opponent gets out Vindicator. Which also survives cut down. And we finally found a lane for Shieldred. So, let's see. Play Shieldred to saddle the Bronco, perhaps. And then probably just offer the trade for Vindicator. Put in my trade for Steel Seraph. As opposed to using Skralv to help attack past it, because then Lightning Helix becomes an option too. And basically hope to take it from there. Yeah, because I can't use Shepherd to shrink down Vindicator and then cut down, because it has Ward 2. So we're mana short of doing that. Could also use Shepherd to pump up one of my creatures, but again, they can still block one of them. So yeah, let's go for Shieldred. When in doubt. And then Steel Seraph can give itself lifelink. Or can go for Vigilance. Although there's a decent chance we present lethal so they'll be forced to trade anyway. So in that case it's better to gain the life. And yeah, Shadow of Mortality of the top for 15 damage. That will certainly do it. So yeah, we got to see this black-white Bronco deck in action, and it can certainly lead to some exciting moments, especially when we reveal Shadow of Mortality to a saddled Bronco, when we did not specifically put it on the top of our deck with Insatiable Avarice, so it's always fun to have those surprise wins when you don't expect them. But the deck can also play a fair mid-range plan with powerful cards like Shieldred, which also pairs well with the Avarice and some spot removal. The deck can maybe be a little soft in the best of one ladder to very 
aggressive decks when we don't open with a bit of removal and as you're on the draw you can easily get run over but uh, yeah the deck's overall pretty fun to play and should even translate a little bit better in the best of three ladder where we have access to some great tools against control decks graveyard combo and even against aggro with additional copies of pest control so that'll do it for today's gameplay wanna thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day